the Cardinals on Sunday. Uh, the Niners are eight and a half point favorites, I believe. No one's really taking the Cardinals seriously in this game, but the Niners did lose to the Rams a couple of weeks ago who got destroyed by the Cardinals. So what are you interested to see in this game? Well, you know, the thing is, and it goes back to even when uh, Robert Sala was the defensive coordinator for the Niners and they were playing the Cardinals. My number one concern is from a defensive perspective, how am I going to contain Kyler Murray? Now, last week, I don't think he had any yards scrambling or much of a scramble uh, against uh, Washington. Washington, uh, you know, got into a shootout and their quarterback, the rookie, my guy, the guy completes 26 out of 30 balls for 230 yards. Yeah. yeah. Now, but see, the thing about it is the improvisational skills of Tyler Murray, especially on third downs, if I'm playing like a too high man under kind of scheme, I've got to have a spy who can catch him. Uh, I cannot have all of my pass rushers on the same level as they push the quarterback because then once he breaks through, then it's wide open space. I've got to have him staggered. I've got to have somebody always in the A or B gap. I cannot have only B gap and outside rushers where they open up the middle of the field like a Grand Canyon. So I worry about that, you know, and my number one concern is how are we going to spy and control Kyler Murray? Number two, I got to respect Connor, the running back. The guy, I think he got over 100 yards last week. So you've got to respect the run from him. And then the other thing about which I'd have a concern from a defensive perspective, uh, they got this rookie kid, Marvin Harrison uh, Jr. at wide receiver. I'm waiting for his breakout game. Now, I remember back in, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the Cards had a wide receiver named Andre Hopkins. Was that correct? Who would catch like 10, 11 passes a game against the Niners. Well, you know, they're, they're trying to play their old defense. How many isolation plays are they going to be able to create with Marvin Harrison running that 12-yard out cut, a 12-yard hook route, you know, just a hitch to get the kid the ball? So how do they maintain him? That's interesting. It, it, looking at the Cardinals, they're, they're a run-first team. They've run the ball more than they've passed it. and. They're one of the more successful running teams in the league. The Niners did a great job against Ramondre Stevenson and Brees Hall, but this is like an eleven on. This is an eleven man rushing attack, and not it's not just Connor and the scrambles they have to worry about. It's like matchup football, zone read stuff, and that's been a, an issue that that has been an issue for the Niners defense throughout the years. Well, it's also even in previous years they still could not handle the scrape exchange down in the low red zone on the zone read. And you'd see a quarterback walking into the end zone because the linebacker who was supposed to scrape an exchange with the defensive end and take the QB uh, on the keeper invariably would step up and bite on the fake with the ball to the run. The quarterback disconnected it on the read and there was no defender uh, to play the quarterback. Yeah, it, it, the 49ers don't run that play offensively, and so they don't practice against it very much, especially in training camp. So it seems like when they finally do face a team that um, features uh, some quarterback-driven runs or at least has him involved in the, in, the, in the running game, the Niners are a little unprepared a lot of times. So well, I'm just the having to do the run. Well, the other thing too, Grant, is who on the Niner offense as a scout team quarterback can – you know, simulate what Kyler Murray does. I mean, uh, a, a punter turner. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to put what Allen back there or your backup quarterback or your third Ross quarterback. Dobbs isn't Kyler Tom, Murray. No, I, you see, put put of Cowling back there. The hard thing is, yeah, who am I going to put back there who could run around, you know, and change direction and stop on a diamond cut to give my defense what it feels like? I tell you, here's a classic point. When we would face great pass rushers for our offensive tackles in the old days, Henry Lawrence, Art Shell, when they were still playing, big Bruce Davis when he was playing, Cliff Branch would line up after practice as a, as a defensive end rushing off the edge against Art. Mm. Because he went, Art wanted to feel what it was going to be like the kick set step against real speed. So he would take Branch, and Clifford would come out there and line up, get in a three-point stance. And on his movement, Hart would kick, 
and Clifford would just blow up the field for five yards just to make Art understand that's what speed is. And see, if you don't see speed in practice and you don't simulate speed in yeah. practice, it'll be the second or third quarter by the time your defense adjusts to the speed of the player. I got a, I got a stat for you. Kyler Murray this season, first half, quarterback rating, 138.4. Second half, 67.3. Is that a little bit of what you're talking about? Like, you can try to prepare for him, but you can't. And so the first and second quarter is going to be a shock, but eventually you get the feel for him. That's correct. You, you know, you've got to get <coughs> excuse me, used to the speed of the game and how he plays the game, his improvisational skills, and you've got to be able to get a feel for it. And uh, it does take a while to adjust. So when you see that split stat, are you thinking this is a guy who's made leaps and bounds as a quarterback, or do you feel like this is a guy who's being maybe protected, uh, propped up? Like, wh what is your impression of the the evolution of Kyler Murray? Is he getting better? Is he on the Baker Mayfield track, or has he has he flatlined, plateaued? Well, it, right now he's still an up and down guy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not yeah. that level of performance that you'd like to see on, on an even keel week in and week out. You know, the other thing is. It's not always about how good Kyler Murray is going to be. How bad is he going to be when he's bad? Yeah. And the thing about it is how low will his game sink uh, in terms of interceptions or bad reads or bad decisions? You know, you're more concerned about um, those depths to which he's going to go when he sinks offensively and what it's going to, the impact it's going to have on your ball club. And that's why I've got to have a package for Kyler Murray as a play caller, and as a coordinator, to get him back on track and get him flowing back in what, with what he feels most comfortable doing. So I can find a way when he starts to go down in performance during the game, I've got to have some plays that are his bread and butter that he can execute to bring his, elevate him back up to where I want him to be, to where he's more of an even keel performer. So I've got to be able to control him that way and say, okay, what does Kyder do best? Now I've got to go feature that to get him back into the groove. Okay, so we've talked about the challenge the 49ers defense faces this week. The Niners offense is facing one of the worst defenses in the league uh, statistically. They have Buda Baker, who's good, and I'm not sure what more they have. So what are you looking to see from a Niners offense this week? Do you want to see them dominate, or what do you want to see? Well, the thing about it is I want to see – I believe the Cardinals have – or maybe are tied for the worst red zone defense in the NFL. I think they've given up like 11 touchdowns in the red zone. And I think there's one other team like maybe Carolina who might also have given up uh, that many touchdowns in the red zone. And so um, yeah, then you look at Daniels last week is 26 out of 30 throwing the ball. No, I don't think he threw any touchdown passes, but the guy completed like 84% of his passes. Yeah. No sacks. Yeah. So now Arizona doesn't show, you know, they don't have Watts anymore, the guys in the broadcast booth somewhere. So, you know, they've got a linebacker with Kazir White and Buda Baker. Those are the only two defensive guys of whom you think about have some kind of a dominating presence on the field. So I the Niners should – have enough tools in their, you know, belt to be able to win this ball game handily. The problem is mentally, are they going to be ready to, you know, step up? And the impact I have is, what's it going to be like in the first quarter, first quarter and a half, uh, with Kyler Murray? If they can rein him in and box him in and control him, then I think you're going to see a very good game from the Niners. If he's out there running amok and he's all over the field and they can't contain him and third down situations and he's ripping off gains and uh, as a improvisational uh, rusher uh, on passing downs because the Niners don't have a spy. Who can, you know, who's the spy for the Niners who can catch Kyler Murray? I don't think they have one. I think they got to play well, I mean, zone coverage they, and have like all eyes gonna, on them. They're going to have Fred Warren in coverage on the running back probably. Yeah. Yeah. So now there has to be another linebacker or – a safety who you're going to put down into a nickel backer. In, if you go with a big scheme and put in a safety instead of a second backer who can run and chase down Kyler Murray, who's going to spy Kyler Murray. That's my question. That, or they're just going to play zone. But see, then you give them some easy throws. Yep. Yes, you do. That's yes, the other thing. 